Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has acknowledged an electoral defeat for his Justice and Development Party, after it was projected to have lost to the opposition in Sunday's municipal elections, the top offices in Turkey's largest cities were among those contested at the ballot box. The ruling party's main challenger, the Republican People's Party has managed to retain the mayorships in Istanbul and Ankara, the economic powerhouse of the country and its capital, respectively. Erdogan had sought to win back the key cities his party ceded five years ago, the Republican People's Party prevailed in 36 of Turkey's 81 provinces, including in some traditional Justice and Development Party strongholds, the news agency Anadolu has said, citing preliminary results. It won 37 percent of the votes nationally, compared to the Justice and Development Party's 36 percent. The results represent the strongest electoral performance by the secular nationalist political force in two decades. The outcome has turned the tables on Erdogan, who beat an alliance of six opposition parties led by the Republican People's Party in last year's presidential election, we could not get the result we wanted in the local election test, Erdogan said after the projections arrived, calling it a turning point for the Justice and Development Party. We will correct our mistakes and redress our shortcomings. Regardless of the results, the winner of this election is primarily our democracy, the national will, the president added, Republican People's Party leader Osgar Ozel delivered a similar message in his celebratory speech. He said, there is no loser in this victory. Our success is not a defeat for anyone. He also argued that voters have decided to change the 22-year-old picture in Turkey and open the door to a new political climate in our country, referring to Erdogan's time in power. Some Western countries deploy military contingent in Ukraine tacitly. French President Emmanuel Macron's statement about possible sending troops to help Ukraine has become a real information bomb. However, in reality, limited military contingents of Western countries are already present on Ukrainian territory. Bloomberg writes about this, citing informed sources. Macron's words provoked a very harsh reaction in Moscow. The purpose of such statements made by the French leader was obvious to make the head of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, to do guesswork and feel nervous about the possible participation of NATO in this war. In fact, some Western military specialists are already present in Ukraine, but this presence is limited. According to individual officials who spoke to Bloomberg on condition of anonymity, several countries already covertly have some contingents in Ukraine, the article said. Macron's psychological pressure on the Kremlin was reportedly eased by the leaders of several EU countries who immediately started to protest and deny the possibility of sending their troops to help Ukraine. Fortunately, this position is not held by all European leaders. A source familiar with the discussions in Brussels says that some EU prime ministers are hoping for Macron's leadership and they welcome his tough stance on Russia, Bloomberg writes. NATO member states have so far sent their servicemen to Ukraine in secret, but in the current situation, the West may decide to openly deploy its contingent in this country. On March the 19th, Russian Foreign Intelligence Service Director Sergei Narishkin said that France was already preparing a military contingent to be sent to Ukraine, which would initially amount to about 2,000 soldiers. At the same time, according to him, French servicemen are already unofficially present in Ukraine and some of them are already dead or injured. Russia attacks the aircraft, passengers and sovereign territory of NATO countries, jams GPS signals. Aircraft flying over the Baltic region are experiencing cases of GPS signal jamming. Russia is considered the culprit of these issues, reports Politico. The blackout episodes, known as GPS jamming, have been occurring regularly since the start of the war in Ukraine in 2022. The source writes, Politico specifies that the interferences are concentrated in the Kaliningrad region of the Russian Federation. Russia is regularly attacking the aircraft, passengers and sovereign territory of NATO countries, said Dana Goward, president of the Resilient Navigation and Timing Foundation. She called these incidents real threats and reminded how, during the accidental jamming in 2019, a passenger plane narrowly missed crashing into a mountain. The European Union Aviation Safety Agency is studying this issue, but regulators currently state that GPS issues do not pose a danger to flights. Cases of interference reported by pilots have steadily increased since January 2022. 
This was stated by the European Aviation Safety Organization, which receives reports from pilots through its voluntary incident reporting system, EVAIR. During the first two months of 2024, EVAIR recorded high increases in GPS outages reports. In absolute figures, we received 985 GPS outages compared with 1,371 for the whole of 2023, Eurocontrol reported. They added that the number of incidents in the first two months of this year was almost seven times higher than in the first two months of 2023. Politico reports that last year, Israel began jamming and spoofing GPS signals at the border with Lebanon to protect its territory from Hezbollah missile attacks. Recently, Israeli disruptions have caused problems for civilian aviation in Lebanon. It was reported that planes bound for Beirut were forced to turn back due to signal shutdown. While disruptions may be inconvenient, they do not pose a significant risk to safety. An aircraft can safely navigate the globe without GPS, said Stuart Fox, Director of Flight Safety and Technical Operations at the International Air Transport Association.